Welcome to Final Punchline, a long-form dad joke podcast season one. Episode six is titled The Donut Shop. It's written by Brad Colebrook and narrated by Delvin Green. Final Punchline's audio engineer is Patrick Sokol and is produced and directed by June Yu. Final Punchline's available on Apple and finalpunchline.com. Now sit back, relax, and listen for the final punchline. Leonard Meeks, owner of Par 3 Donuts, the bakery located next to the golf course, is not working today. He will be making no donuts, serving no coffee, and dodging no golf carts. Leonard opened his bakery over 30 years ago, after golfers continuously complained about the subpar pretzel cart that roamed the fairways. Today, it is considered one of the better bakeries in the city, and draws in customers who would otherwise never lay eyes on the set of clubs. Par 3 has been featured on almost all of our town's best of lists, and five years ago took home the Golden Whisk, one of the most coveted baking prizes in the country. Toughing it out through nearly a dozen broken windows over the years from flyaway balls, Leonard held firm to Par 3's branding, including the donut-themed mini golf course he set up each and every summer. And those of us who have been around long enough will never forget the famous Nine Donut Hole Gingerbread Golf Course from the holiday season in 1992. It's the only time most of us will see a moving windmill made out of actual pastry. And I think I speak for everyone who helped tear down that event when I say it was delicious. Despite his brand, Leonard has reportedly only played a single game of golf in his entire life, saying in an interview last year that he could just never get the swing of things and preferred making holes in donuts over a hole in one. That didn't stop him from filling Par 3's menu with every sort of golf-themed item you could think of. The Golfer's Dozen with 18 donuts, the double bogey that most parents rightfully treated as an entire cake, and my personal favorite, the Sugar Sandpit. Less popular were the famed Powdered Donut Holes, which Leonard discontinued multiple times over the years and refused to call golf balls after repeated incidents of local teens playing actual golf with them. One of these incidents led to the infamous raccoon invasion that I'm sure you all know about, and we've all agreed to never speak of. We'd like to remind our viewers to never leave food outside and keep it far, far away from any wildlife you might see on the edge of the golf course, especially sweets and anything a raccoon could run away with. The local business owners, including Leonard, have put a lot of work into keeping the area free of additional wildlife incidents. But Leonard is not working today. As of this moment, he has retired. Early this morning, he made his last batch of donuts, which will most likely be sold out by the time you hear this broadcast. His beloved staff, who have known of his coming absence for nearly a month now, will continue operating Par 3 for the foreseeable future. You'll still be able to get a donut after your 18th hole, made from Leonard's famous recipes, it just won't be made by him. Taking over is Mike Ramirez, who most customers will recognize as the evening manager, as well as Bassville High's golf coach. There's no word yet about any menu changes but I'm sure we can expect the golf theme to stick around for years to come. However, Mike has informed us that golf carts will no longer be permitted in Par 3's parking lot, given the large number of incidents this year. I'm sure we all remember last week when Brad Palmer drove his into the nearby pit, which officials have assured us is now filled in for good, just like they did last year, and the year before that when the mayor's car got stuck down there. I asked Mike, if he had any worries about Par 3 potentially falling into the pit any time in the future, at which point he laughed and said we better not ever run a headline about someone making a hole-in-one with Par 3 if that happens. To be frank, I didn't get an answer about the pit, and given the city's track record with it, I do have to recommend you park across the street if possible next time you go for a donut. Many of us are wondering where our beloved baker is headed next. While we haven't gotten all of the details, Leonard has told us early this morning that he plans to move somewhere high up in the mountains, with lots of trees and out of range of a driving iron. Many have speculated on his reasons for retirement, ranging from worries about the pit, to supply shortages, to just plain old age. But when asked why he chose to retire, the former owner of the donut shop responded only, I'm tired of the whole business. This has been Final Punchline. Thank you for listening. Please visit our website at finalpunchline.com. We'll be back next week 